Welcome to the Live Fit Listens podcast, a safe space of growth, personal development, and overall wellness with your host, Olivia Catania, diving into the realms of all things health, conscious living, mental expansion, and much more. This podcast is designed to help you evolve into your best self and live fit. Let's get into the show. Welcome to the podcast episode 24. I'm going to be honest as always, but it is, we're doing another like late night session, not late night at all, but like evening, like when I kind of did sunset hour last time, like that's where we're at. It's 6 PM right now, the Sunday before this is going live and we're just going to have another cozy session. It's kind of raining and this weekend was a freaking whirlwind. It was a blur. In a good way. It was in a good way, but literally I've been, the days have just been rolling over since Friday night. I went to bed so early on Friday. Like I haven't gone to bed that early and I don't even know how long. It was like 8.30 or 9 o'clock. I ended up falling asleep. I slept like completely through the whole night. I slept like a total of 10 hours. Got up. Then I went to, it's whatever, long story, but basically super social weekend and the days just kind of kept rolling into one another. Lift it went out last night. She hit the streets. So this morning, ideally I would have filmed this in the morning before I did the things that I did today. Like we ended up going to North Shore, but I just, I wasn't ambitious this morning. You know what I mean? I couldn't, I wasn't, I wasn't up at seven. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I had such a fun weekend though. It was so lovely. And that leads me to what I'm feeling grateful for, for my gratitude for this episode. I just am so grateful for the people that I've met here and specifically Rachel. Shout out to Rachel. I don't know if she listens to this, but she is like the closest friend that I've met since being here. And she's just so kind and she teaches me so much about just so much of this just everything like the culture and just the land and everything about being in Hawaii and I just I don't know I just am so I just love her (laughs) but um I'm just grateful for everyone that I've also met here just in general like when I went out last night and all of that good stuff like I just not only do I love just meeting new people and whether that being like just short interactions but also I just feel like I've just thankful that I even have been able to make friends here because it's not usually an easy thing for me to do and it's felt the easy it's ever felt for me in my entire life right now and I don't know if it's the place here or if I guess in my terms in my journey of like um, personal growth if I'm kind of just more ready and like open to genuine like good friendships I guess or people that I feel like I truly align with I don't really know but regardless I just am thankful for the people that I've met here and how much social time I've had which I feel like I haven't been able to say in previous years and stuff like that so for this episode I really wanted to speak about finding and cultivating confidence because I feel like I've been getting asked this a lot and also with meeting so many new people I've been getting so many comments on my energy and it's it's honestly one of my most favorite compliments And it just means like genuinely the most to me because I just think you guys know energy is everything and energy is so powerful. And like, I think your energy, your aura, your presence, your essence in a room like that is so freaking powerful and unstoppable. It has the potential to be so powerful. And I just think that is so freaking sick. And like, I don't know, I just, I love it obviously. And so I guess it's just been making me reflect more and it has been proven to me how important your energy is and how much it impacts people's perceptions of you and your presence in a room and all that good stuff. And also on like on Instagram and stuff, I feel like people definitely ask like, how do, how am I so confident? How did I get to be so confident and not self-conscious and all that good stuff? So we're going to dive into it today. We're going to talk about you know, finding confidence in who you are, like as a person and how you carry yourself. But we're also going to touch on confidence and like in your looks and your body and that sort of thing. Because trust me, I've been I again, that's something I'm always working on every single day. I'm not going to be like, I never struggle with body dysmorphia or anything like no, I have insecure days 10,000%. So starting off with finding confidence in who you are and how you carry yourself. It is truly all energy. And again, I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been getting so many compliments on my energy and it is, it's just every, and I remember when this hit me for the like first time when I had this realization, because 
I need to think of the best way to explain this, but it's just like when you think of your favorite artist or people who have even on social media, right? Like these quote unquote influencers who have so much hype around them and you're kind of like, why? Like what's so special about them? Like with all the respect, a lot of the TikTok people, it's like, what is so, what are they do? Like, and I'm not trying to degrade them. Like genuinely, I truly mean this respectfully, but you're, I'm just saying there's someone else in the world who could do their TikTok dance the same way. What what's making someone love Addison Ray or Bryce Hall? I don't even really even know who else, but I'm just saying someone who has like a big platform on TikTok as opposed to some normal person who's a dancer and whose quality of the dance is exactly the same. What's making Bryce Hall stick out to people, et cetera, et cetera. And it just is so freaking clear. It is their energy. Like it's truly their energetic presence. It's how they see themselves, how they're showing up energetically. That is directly, I can't stress this enough, that is directly influencing and impacting your perception of them. Everything is a mirror, not even to me. I don't even mean to make this too spiritual, but it's just freaking true. Like Everything truly is energy and it's like, okay, here's, I guess, a more, an example to lead into it. If someone's like, here, try this, it's, or like, we're going to go do this. It's not really good. I didn't have fun the first time. It's kind of a shitty experience. Like no one really likes it anyways, but we're going to go after that. You're kind of going to be like, eh, like I didn't really like, you're right. Like it wasn't really good. But if someone hypes up an experience or a food or a restaurant or something like that, you're more likely to be like, yeah, that was actually really good. Like I did really enjoy that. It's a hundred percent the same freaking concept when someone, whether you're trying to show your work to someone or your talent or et cetera, or just, I guess, show who you are. If you think that like, yeah, I'm a really cool person. You're going to make others feel that way as well, because that's just how you're showing up energetically and people can truly feel it. And just same thing like another I guess example of how loudly energy speaks when you walk into the room you can feel when someone's grumpy or you can walk in the room and when someone's like super soaked like dude you gotta try this I had the best day ever like you're automatically it makes you want to smile it makes you feel light like you're impacted by their energy it's the same concept with I guess less dramatic emotion but if someone feels confident in who they are and like respects themselves and loves themselves and thinks they're truly a good person and they see life in a good light they're excited about life because they're just they're happy they love themselves they see life through a rose-colored lens people are also going to feel that same thing because that's their presence and that's how they're showing up and this was honestly something that really helped me with live fit to be 100% honest it kind of was like oh if it just really clicked I was like oh if you decide that you're someone of importance and that you're worthy and that you're cool and that you're deserving Once you step into that genuine, I really wasn't even expecting this to go into a super like vibrational, energetic talk, I guess, spiritual talk, but I can't help it. Like, cause that's, that's truly what has given me this confidence. It's like, once you decide like, oh, I'm just going to declare that I'm someone of importance that has something worthy to say that I'm a valuable human being. And you step into that energetic vibration, that frequency, you level up the, the, the frequency you're vibrating at, it is impossible for others to not feel that way and like feel that way about you, I should say. And that's like truly all that it takes. And so many people are like, no, like some people like this person is deemed as talent or whatever. They're successful because they're talented. Like I can't draw like them or I can't play basketball like them or I can't sing like them or I don't have the charisma like they do. The reason why they're good at what they're doing or why you feel like they're good at what they're doing Let's put it this way. Their confidence doesn't come from their ability to do what they're doing well. I believe that their ability to do what they're doing well comes first, comes from confidence first. If that makes sense, it comes from their viewpoint, their self-belief first. And that's what's allowing them to be good at those things and allowing them to feel confident and have other people view them from a place of like importance. This person is cool, worthy, deserving, admirable, etc. It's, but a lot of people think that you have to be good at something or you have to be born with something to then give you that confidence to then be seen in that light by others. But that's not that's the wrong order. You have to embody and, and declare and claim the energetic energetic vibration of confidence and up level your view of yourself that then that is what causes you to be to master you. I guess it's a factor that comes into play to help you master your craft, whatever that may be in any single uh, scenario you want to apply this to. 
And then that's what's going to also translate to other people's perception of you. It's also like the same thing if you were to think of like a friend group or like in a social setting. It's kind of like, I don't know why that girl's like lighting up the room or why everyone's so drawn to her. Like, I don't know what's so special about her. She's just another human. You know what I mean? Like she's just another girl. But for some reason, like she's so enticing and drawing to everyone. That's simply because she's claiming that energy and that's what she's embodying. It's not something that's, oh, she's been gifted. She's the chosen one. That's why she has it. No, she just, whether it's subconsciously or consciously, has made that decision to step into that role. And that's what's making everyone else feel that way. And maybe it is subconscious, like she's doing it without even trying. But that doesn't mean that you can't make it something conscious and that you can't make the choice to step into that vibration as well. It's just crazy because I feel like I'm living proof of this like I never felt like I I don't know especially growing up like I never felt like I uh I guess was someone of like importance in a social circle if that makes sense or I always kind of felt like I was the one that faded into the background a little bit but like it wasn't until the last few years and I guess it's been echoed to me here because this is the first time I've been obviously this progressed in my like personal development journey and spiritual journey while being in a completely new place where I'm like able to guess start over but once I kind of fully stepped into that and I was like no, I'm going to believe that I'm someone that's worthy, that's cool, that's important, that's valuable, that's like just owning who she is. And it's just been so clearly reflected of how much other people have been able to feel that dude. Cause like, it'll be like random, random people who will compliment me on my energy or that I just feel electric, et cetera. And it's just, it truly all starts with within and it's a total conscious choice. And I know that seems easier said than done. So I think some other things that go along, I guess, to help you feel help you fearlessly step into that role of like, no, actually, like, I am a cool person and I deserve to be confident. It's recognizing your strengths and like being proud of those strengths and just being like your biggest cheerleader and supporter. We are so hard on ourselves all the freaking time. And we expect that we need to be good at something to then like find confidence or like look a certain way to then be confident or like I said, be good at a certain skill or have a certain job or a certain amount of money in the bank to then be deemed to then be able to claim confidence but the problem is, how are we ever supposed to get there if we're constantly our, our harshest and worst critics? You know what I mean? Like, if we can never be proud of what we've done, if we can never acknowledge our strengths, we're never going to feel like we've done enough to then be able to, to claim that confidence. So that's what I mean. Where I just feel like the order that we think that this stuff comes is reversed. Like, no, you need to be proud of what you can do right now. You, knew, you need to acknowledge your strengths right now. You need to support yourself right now first. That's what's going to allow you to cultivate the confidence and reach that point where you can like truly be confident and proud of who you are. Because if you don't do that, you're never going to feel good enough anyways in the first place. I always say be your own best friend and it is just so freaking true. And I think that that is just a really, really big reason why I do feel so confident to my day to day is because like I'm the one I don't I don't have this negative self-talk. I'm not constantly putting myself down. Like if something goes wrong or if I do something that's embarrassing, I'm the one that's like consoling myself or is that the right word? I'm like comforting myself in my mind because I'm, I'm being my own friend. And so I kind of am there to like give myself that own, my own confidence boost. And I don't tear myself down and be like, oh no, like that was so stupid. You're like, what do you th- who do you think you are, et cetera, et cetera. And just tearing my own confidence down. If you are your own biggest cheerleader, your own supporter, your own friend in your mind, it's so easier to keep your spirits uplifted and to remind yourself that you're worthy and that it's not a big deal and that like you still deserve to be confident, et cetera. It's just like the same thing, the same way you would comfort a friend. Why are we not doing that to ourselves? And I think if a, more people did that, way more of us would feel fully confident in who we are. It's kind of like that moral support factor. When you have a friend, it makes you feel more confident. It's the same thing when you're that, you're that person for yourself in your mind. There's also a quote that I freaking love. It says, confidence builds by doing. And I love that. And that's one way to look as well to cultivate confidence, I guess, in your craft and in your skills. But the way that I specifically wanted to touch on it here in this episode is like the more that you work on your craft, and in this case, the craft being who you are, the more confident that you will become. Meaning this, it's kind of like when you're intentional with who you are, which you guys know I'm also really big on this. So many people 
don't live with intention, whether that being deciding the person that they want to be, deciding the way they want to show up in life and what actions I guess need to correlate and add up to become that person, to create that person, etc. So many people just float through life without any intention and without any purpose to design the person that they would like to become. A lot of people don't even know the person they want to be because they are living without intention. So when you're living with intention, you're deciding who you want to be, you're intentional with how you want to sculpt and shape who you are and what you want to stand for and the habits you want to have and how you want to show up, the friend you want to be, the daughter you want to be, the person you want to be, the energy you want to emit to this beautiful space that we have on earth. When you're intentional with those inputs, with those components, and you practice that, right? Your actions are in alignment with who you want to be and all that sort of stuff and the the intention of the person that you want to be continuously doing those actions are what's going to give you that repetition and quote unquote the doing in this quote like by you continuously the more work you do on yourself and who you are the more confident you're going to be in yourself the more confidence you will have in yourself because you just have simply more practice and I think that's so so relevant and so strong here because again you guys know I, I that's a big passion of mine is to do a lot of personal development work And I think looking back, especially where I am now compared to where I was, I feel so much more confident simply because I've put in the work to design the person that I want to become. And also in terms of like the practice of doing so, it's like when you've done something for so long, back to this quote, confidence builds by doing, you're bound to become more confident in it because you've simply have just done it with repetition, you've had practice. It's like in the gym, the more reps you do of a squat, the more comfortable and confident you're going to be able to do, be able to be with doing that squat. I think even going with that, the more intentional you are with shaping the person that you are, you end up being someone you're proud of because it's something that you chose. Like I, again, when I say people, I feel like aren't super intentional with who they are. They're kind of like, I don't know, like these were the cards that I got dealt. And sometimes it's hard to feel confident in that because it's like if someone gave you a piece of art, it's like, I mean, I'm confident in it, I guess, but like, it's not mine. I had no decision making in this. I had no part of me, my heart, my spirit, my soul in this piece of art. Like, yes, it's cool, but how can I be proud of it? It's not mine. I don't have any intimate attachment. There's no piece of me in that. But when back to what I'm saying when you're intentional with who you are and you put in the work to design who you are you craft who you are you decide the person you want to be how you want to show up in life there's your there's you in there you know what I mean there's effort there's heart your soul your spirit is in that you you, it was more of a conscious choice right it's what you choose and it's so much easier and I guess makes more sense. Like it's just effortless for you to then feel comfortable and confident in that because it was something that you chose something that you designed. It's again, back to the art analogy. If you painted your own mural, right, that you put your time, your heart, your effort into, you're bound to feel more confident and proud of it when you're finished. Cause you're like, I freaking did that. I chose that, right? I put in the work to create that. I really feel that way as to why I do feel so confident as a person, because I've, I'm intentional with who I am. I didn't get here on accident. I say that a lot. I did not get here by accident. I think everyone is set up in a different way, right? But I just, even from a young, I remember when I was like 15 is like when I kind of started being like, I would see whether it's something as small, like something as small as style. Like I remember these rings. I love that I wear jewelry. I love it. It's I'm, I'm weirdly proud of it. Like I think it looks really sick and I align well with it. And I just think it's cool. I love the way that I collect them. And I remember when I was 15, it was from my brother's girlfriend at the time. I thought it was so cool that she wore rings. And I was like, that is really cool. Like I really align with that. Like it, it really drawed me in. I was like, that really, I resonate. Like I feel like that really suits me. Like I want to do that in my own way. It was inspiration for me. Like you get inspiration for artwork and I remember being like, oh, I want to be like, I want to be the girl that wears a lot of jewelry. And I remember like thinking that and I guess I feel weird saying it because it seems like it's inauthentic, but it's not. It's like you listening, I guess, back to those few episodes that I talked about intuition and stuff. It's like you listening to those intuitive nudges and your soul's calling and expression. We're on this life journey to kind of let to find ourselves in the sense of coming back to ourselves and like letting us letting ourselves unfold in terms of how we want to express ourselves and I think that's a huge piece of life is simply just self-expression. And I guess just listening to those nudges and like letting your spirit and self-expression unfold is a really cool, beautiful part of life that I really love. Um, But so anyways, kind of got off on a tangent. I don't really know where I was going with that. But just that 
when you're someone that you choose, it's like easier to be more, I guess, proud and confident of that because there's way more intention in it. Simply put, I really dragged that one out, but that's a big thing that helped me. It gained a lot of confidence. And then in terms of confidence, like in your looks. So I feel like I could drag this out for a really long time. There's a lot of avenues I could take, you know, think about what your body does for you. So many different things. But the biggest thing that has helped me, and I kind of just want to leave this short and sweet because especially recently, this has been the biggest thing that has helped me when I have bad body image days, which to be fully honest, has been a lot, honestly, since being here, which I wasn't expecting that. And I'm going to give you a background story for this because I still remember the first time I had this revolution. So this was in 2020 and no, no, 2019. And this was when I was the lowest mentally this was like the whole part of my fitness journey, spiritual journey, when I was like completely was so disconnected for myself. I was 15 pounds heavier than I am right now, which isn't a big deal, but I hated it in the moment. That was the first time I like truly, genuinely, strongly disliked the way that I looked. I didn't recognize myself in the mirror. I felt so misre- misrepresented, I guess, by my body, if that makes sense. I felt so disconnected from who I am, my body, everything. I just was at a low point and I just... I can't, that was the least amount of confidence I've ever had in my body, just lowest amount of self-love. And it kind of, I got to the point where I was so freaking low. I, I, I hate using the word hate, but I just strongly disliked the way I looked so freaking much. I just, anyone else I saw on the street anywhere, I was like, even they, like, they're just so, they're beautiful. Their body's beautiful. Because I hated mine so much, if that makes sense. Like I was like, it made me look at everyone else through these road colors, rose colored lenses because I was like, I, I just, I literally saw myself as like in the dirt rock bottom and just like everyone else was above me. So I get, it got to a point where I was just like admiring any, everyone else. And I just admired her parts of her body and her parts of her body. And I was like, see, like she has a beautiful body. Like I don't, whatever. I guess just coming out of a place that like I saw no beauty in mine at this point. But then it made me click like because I started to see everyone's beauty because everyone's body was so different like no one's body was exactly the same and when that hit me I was like wait her body is so different from her body but like for some reason they make me feel like their body is so beautiful and it really hit me that everyone is beautiful because everyone is unique like that's what makes them beautiful is that everyone is different and it seems so painstakingly obvious simple and kind of cliche But for some reason, you know, sometimes when it's like a classic statement, like really finally clicks for some reason, that's what this was for me. And now when I like get super insecure, I'm having an off body image day. For some reason, this just simple mindset shifts brings me so much comfort. Like I just tell myself I am me like this is me like this is me represented in a physical form in a body form. And like it is so unique and individual to me. And that's what's freaking beautiful. And I think that that me being able to fully claim that stems from me just having self-love. Like I've, I guess, developed my self-love so strongly, my care for myself so strongly, like my relationship with myself is so strong. I'm so much my best friend, I guess, that I see so much beauty and so much that's worth loving in me that it's allowed me to be more forgiving and graceful with my body as well if that makes sense like that's what has allowed me to see the beauty and the fact that since my body is mine it's beautiful because I see beauty in me and who I am as a person and I think that it's just really powerful for me so when now when I'm feeling very you know down or I'm having a bad body image day like I just am like I, I this is me though like this is my body there's no one else that has this same body And that's what's so freaking beautiful. Like, it's so unique. Like, it's one of a kind. If you were to if you were to have that analogy with literally any materialistic product, if there was only one of something in the world that automatically is going to increase its value, its demand, it's this is a weird analogy. But you know what I mean? It's going to seem more like people are going to have more googly eyes. It's going to seem more like worthy and beautiful because it's rare. Like you're rare. And that's what's beautiful about you. Because your body is so individualistic and unique. And it's just, I guess, seeing that that beautiful and just the odds of that design is so rare. Like I'm saying, like that's what just makes it so precious. And like you, there's nothing left to do but to acknowledge that the beauty within that, in my opinion. 
So I don't know if that's really going to help anything. But for me, I guess it's just kind of about finding beauty and uniqueness and in individuality and rarity and recognizing that my body is all of those things has allowed me to really recognize and appreciate its beauty and then also of course like another thing that helped me was recognizing yes like that I also feel like that's decently common for people to be like I appreciate what what my body does for me and that's what really helps me when I'm having bad body image days which I 100% agree with that as well but kind of adding on to that and going into a different avenue that's not super common I guess to just add to the the art, the beautiful cake here is um, when I looked at it in the sense that like my body is a reflection of my experiences. And I thought that was really sick when I thought of it that way, meaning my experiences right now is just simply, you know, like my, my, my eating, my um, training, how I'm weight training right now, all that sort of stuff. Like your body is a reflection of where you're at and your experiences in life and how you live your life, which I think is really cool. It's, it's a physical manifestation. Whoa. It's a physical manifestation of your life experiences that have already come and gone that are like something that's in the moment, you know what I mean? That are fluid, but it it makes it tangible in the physical form and brings it into a physical manifestation, which made me brought also brought me a lot of peace within my body, which I thought was really cool. Like the shape of your body is kind of an accumulation of your life experiences, which is really cool and allowed me to see my body in a different way and in more of like a beautiful light through rose colored glasses. Cause I was like, I am my body. I am my life. Wow. This is kind of tripping me out. But like I am my life in a physical form and that's what's holding my soul. That was unexpectedly really beautiful. I'm just sitting on that one really quickly. That's really cool. That makes so much sense because we are life, you know. And that like goes back to the whole like spiritual phenomenon that like we are life experiencing itself. We are life itself. If we're an accumulation, if our body is the accumulation of all of our experiences, that is just life itself. And we are experiencing it as ourself. We are it because it is our body. It is our vessel, I guess, that is holding us. Interesting. Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent here. Basically, more of the story of this episode is I really want to echo to you guys that everything is all energy. Confidence is 100% is energy. You need to claim how you want to show up and the person you want to be. That literally is it. If you sit here and you're like, oh, how do I, how can I be more confident if I'm XYZ and you constantly talk negatively to yourself, you have self doubt, etc. How do you be more confident? It's kind of the fake it till you make it. But yes, like you need to claim who you are. Like you need to step into that power. Also, just simply working on yourself, right? All my journaling, all my affirmations, all my meditation. That isn't for nothing. It's not some woo woo bullshit. I'm sorry. Like I feel so passionate about this. Like when people are like, oh, like how, you know, when they compliment my energy, it's kind of like, oh, she's born with it. No, it's like it. This is work. This is soul work that I'm preaching that I'm trying to help, you know, encourage you guys to go on this journey. It is soul work for a reason. It is there truly is such thing as raising your energetic vibrational frequency. If you were to speak to me five years ago, I would not have the same presence, essence, aura as I do right now. And it's because I've done the work to up level my energetic vibrational frequency. I'm happier, right? I've done healing work to help heal traumas, et cetera. I, I declare in the mornings when I do my affirmations and I meditate what frequency I want to operate at that day. And it doesn't happen overnight, right? It's not an overnight thing, but slowly but surely you are literally quite literally raising the vibration that you, your energetic being, because we are completely made up of energy. Everything is energy. Doing all of those things helps to raise that vibrational frequency up in the, in the frequency that you're operating at. So again, sounds painstakingly simple. You're like, okay, so I just need to tell myself, like, I'm just going to declare that I'm more confident and I'm more confident. Yeah, pretty much. Everything just truly is a mirror. So like if you're walking around telling yourself like I'm worthy, I'm the shit. This sounds so conceited, but you know what I mean? Like just telling yourself like it doesn't even need to be like I'm I'm the shit, like I'm better than everyone else. It's just like I know my worth. I rule I rule my own space. Like it's not even doesn't need to, it's not about anyone else. It's not in this comparison game. It's just simply like you know your own worth, you know your own value, just like everyone else has their own worth and their own value. But claiming that the way you walk, right? All that sort of stuff when you fully 
believe that about yourself, the way you walk is different. Your persona, your your mannerisms are different. Your energetic aura, your essence, your presence just shows up differently because you're on a different energetic wavelength. And it's just really powerful and it doesn't need to be more complicated than it needs to be. So just own who you are. Tell yourself those positive affirmations. I do my affirmations in the morning to help raise my confidence because they're raising my energetic vibrational frequency. They're changing and reprogramming those subconscious beliefs that I have about myself that have been deteriorating my self-worth and my self-confidence and my self-value. So tell yourself you love yourself. Tell yourself you're deserving. Tell yourself you're worthy. Tell yourself that you're beautiful. Tell yourself that you're every, whatever you want to be, the person you want to be, however you want others to describe you in adjectives, say those freaking adjectives to yourself in an affirmation every morning while looking at yourself in the mirror. I don't care if it feels weird. I don't care if it's cheesy. I don't care if it's corny. I really don't care. That's It's what I do and it's so powerful. If you want to be more fun, if you want to be seen as funny, if you want to be spontaneous, if you want to be seen as like electric or magnetic, say that shit to yourself in the mirror. I am magnetic. I am an electric being. My energy is so warm and others can feel that. I, I light up a room with my presence. Say that shit and it's literally watch and it I I'm just so passionate about it it won't even take as long as you think watch how people's I guess react to you in a room after you've been saying those affirmations and I promise you you will notice a difference so with that on that note the affirmation that I have for you guys today is a little bit just I, I wanted to help you know ignite confidence for all of who you are so the affirmation is I am confident in who I am what I look like and what I stand for I think it's important to feel confident in like what you're about, right? Your beliefs, you as a person, you know, what, what do you, you know, what do you stand for? Like, what are you about? What's your message as a person, right? So one more time, I am confident in who I am, what I look like and what I stand for. You're beautiful. You own the game. It's your decision to own the game. Step into that power, claim that energy, tell yourself these affirmations, work on yourself, you know, look at life through the glass half full, take care of yourself, incorporate self-care, take care of your mind, take care of your mental health, journal, meditate, have whatever faithful practice that uplifts your spirits, go for walks, be out in nature more, get out in sunshine. All that stuff is energetic self-care to be fully honest. And it is so powerful. And like, it has completely set me up to have so many other opportunities in life, helped, has helped me finally get into alignment with the right people that are meant for me by, I guess, just living life this way. And it's just, it's freaking powerful and I don't have another adjective for it. I guess transformative, that's another great word. So anyways, I love you guys so freaking much. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope it helped. Thank you guys for listening or watching. I'm sending you so much love and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.